Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go more into removing elements and also adding them as well. So before we talked about insert adjacent element, um, and it works very well. So if we have this here, it adds and subtracts or adds and removes this particular date input element. What's the problem with that? Again, scaling is always something to keep in mind. So if you add one element, no big deal. What if we add two, 10, 20? Becomes a whole different picture. The problem when you add one element at a time is that you have to keep track of one element at a time. But if you think about it, that's not how we really do things in real life, is it? So if we have to add a group of 20 people into a room, we don't say, okay, name every 20 people and say, go to the room. Generally, we don't do that. We sometimes do. But usually we say something like, everybody who is knowledgeable in programming in Dart, I want you to go into this room. And 20 people get up and move into the other room, right? And then once you have that group of people, for example, you want to say, okay, I want to know everybody whose birthday it is today. So you say, in that group of people, whose birthday is it? So you don't care about like the original group of 5,000 people. You don't care about them. You just care about the 20 people in the room right now. So if we think about what we're doing from a programming point of view, we're getting a subgroup here, okay? And we're actually looping through that group in order to actually find out what you need to know. That's how we do things in programming, right? How does that apply here? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think I got tracked, I'm sidetracked more than anything else. But here, it, what, what we would do, how we could do this, it was we would create something like a div element. And let's call it ID equals um, div date. Why are we creating a div element? Well, when you think about it, if we want to have a subgroup of people, right? A, a subgroup of people who know to program in Dart. What we're actually doing is we're having a group, for example, a div ID equals Dart capable, programming in Dart capable, whatever you want to do. And then we have children of that group, right? So in one heading, there's the, the um, able to program in Dart, and the children would be the list of people. And you can loop through them to get their IDs and get their characteristics. So that's how it would be easier, I guess, better to, to add elements and remove them if we're going to do them in numbers. So this is, this is another, another different way of how to do it. So we added a div element there. Now we have to instantiate it. So var div date equals query selector div date. Excellent. There. Now we have somewhere, again, remember, um, a div is not a rendered element. It is a conceptual element. I keep saying that. Um, I, I made this up. So if it's confusing you when you look at other sources, I'm really sorry about that. But it's just a concept that it's here. It's right here, and you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is div date dot children dot add. So we don't need to know where in the div it's going to go. It's going to go inside the div in and of itself, right? So it's going to go right inside of here because it's a child. So if we do this, it should do the same thing, right? So div date, children will add future date onto that. And then what we could do is say right here, div date dot remove, right? So again, what we're doing is we're adding to the div a child add in the future. Okay, so remember the DOM. So now it's easier in the future to track, right? Because now we know future date. It's not next to some node, which I don't remember the value of it. 
and maybe there's 15 of these and we have to track all this. Now it's nice and simple. It's in the div called div date. Okay. I think I saved this already. <clears throat> Adds it, subtracts it. Uh oh. It's not working anymore. What's going on? Let's get some answers here. More tools, JavaScript. Uh, no such method not found remove. What's going on? So when we look at this, div date dot children dot add future date. Now, if you click it again and it's not checked, the you're removing actually the entire div, right? You're not removing the child. You're removing the div in and of itself. So that's why before when we had query selector um, future date dot remove um is that correct future date query select oh that's not correct so this one actually works right because we're actually getting the element itself and we're removing it we're leaving the div by itself so if you go in the previous one if you do this and you remove the div how are you going to add a child onto the div when you just removed it so that's the problem we run into so how can we do this we can do div again we can add we, we can use the query selector future date and just remove that. But again, we're keeping track of each individual, and that makes it a little harder, right? So we could do it this way also. That way is not wrong. It's just a step that you may or may not be able to do. So we'll just experiment with the different things. You could do children selector dot remove. Let's go through this one. Remove last. So the last one in the list of child elements... So remember, if you have like 15 things, number 15, it would be the one to remove. That works. Okay. So how about children dot remove at? Okay. Remember, children are a list. You can loop through the list and say where on the list is the thing you want to remove. It's going to be position zero because there's only one child, right? Play around with this a little bit, okay? And there's finally remove. That does not work. At least I hope it doesn't work. Okay, good. Because you, you have to have some value inside here. And what's the value? Um, it's not future date. Remember, future date is the Dart element. We need the HTML element. So it would be query selector future date. So that's how you can actually do it. And it's nice and easier. However, there are other ways we can do it even now. Now, here we remove add and remove the element in a nice easy section but at the same time are there other ways to do it well there are other ways and those ways involve css so what if you have elements that are on the html page but you just happen to remove it okay so you just not show it in other words hide it from screen that works just as well doesn't it so there are some options where you want to do that. For example, if you have a big, huge page and you have a lot of elements and you don't want to render the elements in Dart, you want to render them in originally HTML. Why? HTML is faster. So if you have to load the HTML page, then you load Dart, then you get Dart to, to render some of these elements, that actually slows it down. And if we talk about thousands of elements, you can have a very lagging web page okay or web application so why don't we try something like this why don't we say um, input type
let's try this. But this is what we had in the beginning, wasn't it? Okay. How about um, style equals um, style equals display none? How about if we do that? We can do this in CSS or write in HTML, depending on how extensive it is. We're actually hiding it. So by the very nature, we're just hiding it in the very beginning. It's there, but we're hiding it. Style display equals none. Okay, but when I click on checkbox, instead, what I'm going to say is, um, actually, this is gone, so that doesn't count. Future, um, no, it's not future date. I have to remove this also. Uh, actually, I'm just going to comment it out. I'm going to say future date equals query selector because it actually exists on the web page right now, right? And what I can actually do instead is just change the CSS. So future dot style dot display equals block. If you went through the CSS, you would remember that there's different ways of actually displaying, and you could display equals none, which means it's hiding, right? Again, this is not my strength, so I wish I could go in more detail, but this doesn't always, that's not always the easiest to do. Um, display equals none. So what I'm saying is that when I first load it, it's not going to display. If I click on it, it's going to dis display. And if I click on it again, it's not going to display again. Same thing. So the effect is basically the same. Just different ways of actually adding and removing elements on your HTML page. Again, I'm just a beginner. So which one is the best way? <laughs> I'm going to always say it kind of depends, but just the concept of if you want to add one or two elements, what difference does it really make? If you want to add a huge set of chunks uh, on there and then remove entire chunks, and we'll go over that actually in the future, probably best to do display use CSS to make it appear and disappear or hide it and show it. Um, if it's just adding, you, you really want to add a specific group like under a div, um, and, and you want to be able to manipulate that data inside of there, you probably want to use div and children, okay? Insert adjacent element if you want to add one or two, and it's a trivial type of web app also, all right? Thank you.